So this is where I say hello to everybody. This is Lux. I have a special guest with you, my buddy Thamriel. Thamriel, you know what to say. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thamriel. Welcome to a commentary about World of Warcraft. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we, we had an overdose of uh, the opposite of what you would probably call what's what's one of uh, uh, well butrin, <laughs> you know, and and we we have a major dose of negativity because the sub rate has been dropped by almost thirty percent, and we we happen to have some very interesting information right at our fingertips. Basically, before they kicked in the beta of world of uh, wad. Actually, a lot of times I find myself going for long walks, and I'm either formulating ideas for new videos or I'm basically developing an idea for a video, a commentary, and whatnot. And during the wide beta, I went for a walk, and I came up with 10 reasons why Warlords of Draenor would fail. And now that we're six months from the initial launch and release, I look back at that list – and I brought in Thamriel because I wanted someone to speak objectively and comment on some of these uh, different ideas I had because some of them were pretty dead on accurate. Some of them really missed the mark, and some of them still may start to have some legs as we move forward. So are you ready for some uh, overdose of negativity but also truth here? <laughs> Yep. Okay, good. For Mr. Optimist, that's a strong <laughs> statement. Now, what, then none of these reasons are any, in any particular order, but we'll start with number 10. I had said that there was going to be a huge loss of subs before release. And the reason for this is the average rage rate, I was going to say rage tier. <laughs> rage tier. <laughs> the average raid tier is anywhere from three to four months, maybe as much as five or six months. And as you know, ICC was 10 months, Dragon Soul was 10 months. Siege of Ogamar was at least 10 months, closer to 12 months of raiding, and that is lends to burnout, that lends to boredom, that lends to redundancy, and people just unsub, and we've seen that trend. So I kind of thought that the fact that So was almost a year of raiding that particular tier, a lot of people were going to drop out, that would affect how much, I guess, staying power Warlords with Dra Draenor would have. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean... I don't know, SOOs just seem to last way too long. Like, I mean, I, I think it lasted even longer than Cataclysm or, like, <laughs> Dragon Soul. <laughs> oh, it did. It At did. least Dragon Soul was fun and entertaining, and SO, it's like, man, it's like Siege of Ads. <laughs> so many ads to fight. So getting to a boss battle was like a relief. It's like, whew, finally, we get to have a little break. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, I think anything in in you know anything that's overkilled and anything in in it's a, in a state of redundancy is going to lead to boredom and it's going to lead to burnout. And I mean that could very well be the case why we're seeing a you know three million drop in subs. I mean because a lot of that same redundancy seems to repeat itself with the garrisons. That that this is obviously the ninth reason garrisons. I said garrisons would fail, and my theory was that Wildstar, which obviously whatever you know, sub hemorrhaging, you know, condition they have, it's found its way to Blizzard. And I felt that Wildstar, one thing they did right was the player housing. They got it right. It's bigger. Oh, it's yeah. better than WoW. Oh, yeah. But nobody knows it. <laughs> you know, nobody knows it because nobody plays the game. Nobody wants to be bothered with the game. They lost the trust of the subscribers, and it's really hard for them to gain it back. I'm shocked it hasn't gone free to play. Actually... It might be going to buy to play, doing the same thing that ESO is doing. Where did you see that? Uh, I was talking to my brother and my buddy. We were trying out GTA 5 for the first time, and my brother pulled up an article where it said that uh, Wildstar pulled out all their current editions and they're gonna come out with a bat, like I guess like a battle chest version. And that's kind of the same thing that ESO was trying to do. They pulled they pulled away the sub fee and want to present something else. So I think they're gonna be going to buy to play. Yeah, no, I thought, uh, yeah, I actually did a video on that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, whether it's buy-to-play, free-to-play, I'm just surprised that they're not opening the accessibility of the game. And I mm -hmm. happen to think that Garrisons were a lot better than I initially had, had expected. If you spin the clock back towards the end of Wrath of the Lich King and you popped on the forums of MMO Champion, there were people that were parading and trumpeting for the idea of player housing in WoW. And five years later, Blizzard decides to listen, and they come out with Garrisons because because they probably felt compelled to compete with Wildstar and offer garrisons. Now, I like the way they did it. 
uh, my thoughts were that it was going to fail because they didn't necessarily know what to do with them. First, you could have it anywhere in Azeroth. Oh, you, you know, you, for you know, if you wanted it in these Eastern Plaguelands, you could put it there. If you wanted it in um, Ashara, you could put it there. If you wanted it in Ashenvale, you could put it there. And that was the first thought. Then they scrapped that, and then they said you could have it anywhere in in Outland, you know, two point oh, <laughs> which is Draenor. And then you kind of figure that everybody's going to say, I want it in the Grand. So then they kind of figured, no, this is going to be a problem. Then they came up with a really brilliant way of kind of progressing your character with leveling and progressing your garrison in the same process, which I thought was brilliant, better than expected, innovative, fresh, new, but it's just too goddamn fucking repetitive. It really is. (laughs) I mean, and and now I'm seeing it as Dailies 2.0 in a hearthstone mode and instead of you actually going out there you're kind of delegating someone else to go out there it's kind of yeah. like botting your own dailies <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. yeah it was innovative yes it was new yes it was something fresh but i don't think it was something to really build upon but i do think blizzard missed the boat here and that is customization how great would it be to have drain eye architecture in your garrison Oh or my blood god, elf. I would have loved it. I saw or you just like pandering person to me with a drain or architecture. Or old <laughs> old English Worgen architecture. Oh yes, I would love that. Or even American Indian style Torin architecture. I mean, whether it's something that they, they just missed the boat. And mm-hmm. this is why 3 million people left. Because Blizzard constantly misses these boats. They misses they miss these opportunities. Instead of sending people on garrison missions, they could have sent people on dailies to open up and unlock different architectures in their garrison. That would be worth grinding dailies for. Or they could have even put it in the Blizz store if they really wanted to focus on making a little bit of extra money. Because people are going to pay money for that. But they didn't decide to sell it. They didn't decide to make it a daily in-game that people could progress to. They didn't do it at all. They missed the boat. At first, I, I kind of felt like that kid that's like, like Blizzard is the dad, and I'm the player, the kid, in the back of back of a car, and he's he says, we go to McDonald's today, and you can have whatever you want on the menu. But by the time we get there, all I get is a Big Mac. It's like, didn't you say I could have whatever I want? It's like, nope, that's what you get. Enjoy. Be happy with it. <laughs> do you want some pickles with it? <laughs> yeah, or do you want, that's kind of how I felt. That? Yeah, that's kind of how I felt with that. Because like they said, oh, we're gonna be able to put it anywhere in Azeroth. Then they lower down anywhere in Warlords, Draenor, and like Outlands. And then they said, okay, no, just Draenor. And then you can have any <laughs> buildings you want. Okay, no, just faction buildings. It's like. But the, I mean, they're what missing. The fu- <laughs> what I mean, the fuck? I mean, Make up your mind. <laughs> well, I mean, they're missing. A, you when you play a game, you look at it from the perspective of the player or even the gaming company. From a gaming company perspective, they're losing so much money by not having microtransactions to charge people for the architecture. And from a player standpoint, they're missing so much of an opportunity of true progression to go out there and do a quest chain or cover a zone in order to unlock different architectural types in your garrison oh yeah they're missing the boat completely now and and quite honestly i don't think it's that difficult to do it's just kind of copy and paste kind of thing i don't i i don't get it i don't get it well i'm going to move on to the next one which is also lending into customization of things and that is the new character models i actually saw this as a bad thing in the sense that I kind of felt that it was kind of a premise. I kind of like felt it was a preface, kind of laying the groundwork for more microtransactions to come. In other words, brown orcs, leper gnomes, iron dwarfs, high elves, all different types of subclasses that people could pay for to the good old Blizz store, microtransactions. I really felt that that these upgraded character models were going to be a precursor to that. And they're not. And now I kind of want them to be, just so we could have more customization in the game. You spend so much time upgrading these these character models, and most of them look good. We'll find one that we love, we'll find one that we hate, and the other ones we really like. That's a pretty good thing to sign off on. At first, I was kind of thinking that, hey, introducing new races would definitely like 
give them maybe ideas for microtransactions. I could say, you want more hairstyles for your blood elves, you can pay $2 on the Blizz store and get more hairstyles for your blood elf. Or whatever, for your orc, anything. It definitely was a great window for microtransactions because, I mean, hey, we're getting pretty models. Why not add something to them? Uh, but overall, I really like the models. Uh, overall, they're pretty great. I was, I kind of had a gripe with the Blood Elves. The fact that they didn't come out at the release of the expansion, I think that's bullshit. They should have no reasons to not have them beginning of expansion. No reason whatsoever. I mean, hell, even Pandaria was originally an April Fool's joke, and yet they made that expansion look beautiful and flawless, and made sure that Pandaren came out, like, looking good, with all the hairstyles and all the faces and textures and everything. But yeah, they can't even work, they can't even sit down and dedicate three days to fucking Blood Elves. It's like, really? And right before the expansion was released, they were talking about, oh, we want to be able to add postures to orcs and trolls and torn and stuff. I'm like, that's great, but can we please, like, not even talk about it, not even think about it, not, really, not even put it down on paper anywhere, until you finish the Blood Elves. You know, it's like it's like you get yourself a chess, a brand new chess set, and then the two rooks on the white side are gone. They're just not even there. It's like, well, what do I do? I don't have my fucking rooks. I need and, them. and the next thing you know, you have a, like a salt shaker as a as a placeholder for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or you buy or buy borrow white checkers to like replace them, just so you can play fucking chess. <laughs> it's like, can we not get the two rooks with us already as a package? Well, like, I mean, talk about even, yeah, I mean, even just talk about missing the boat and missing opportunity. You know, because when I think of things, I think of what is fun and cool to do as a player. But I also think what's fair to Blizzard because, yes, mm -hmm. they have to make money. They're a publicly traded company. Yeah, they're business. Exactly. And and you have to think of what's fair to them. I mean, it's almost like, you know, if you listen to ever listen to sports radio, you know, and you get you get some idiots saying, you know, calling in and, you know, they always come up with this, you know, trade that's going to favor their team. You know, they're almost like, well, OK, here's the deal. You know, like like say the Mets want to get Wanji and Carlo from the Marlins. We'll give you Julio, you know, Chavez. And and Pedro Estacio, you know, two minor league players that are hitting 250 for, you know, Wanji and Carlo, who's probably the next stud hitter in a national league. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. not a fair trade-off. So when what's fun for the players also has to be kind of profitable and have some monetary benefits to Blizzard. Otherwise, they're not going to do it. So that's their incentive. So when I think of that, I'm like, here's something you guys could have done. You could have stuck with your regular new class or new race, one or the other, or maybe both. And you could have introduced that with Warlords, because right now that's something that's sorely missed, and people were pissed off about, me included, not having that either new race or new class, or even fourth spec. Just more customization, more additions, more choices in the game. They didn't give us much of anything, and now it's starting to show. And that's a big reason why 3 million people dropped off the face of the WoW Earth. So what they should have done is do that and then hold back the character models because I pretty much guarantee you if you held back the character models till 6.1 or 6.2, probably even just 6.1, I don't think that that sub rate's going to drop 3 million. It's not. It's going to give people something to look forward to. It's going to be – yeah, they'll be pissed that they're not ready with the X-Pack, but they're going to be pretty damn happy with – all new character models in 6.1, as opposed to the fucking selfie camera. <laughs> the fucking just just thinking of a selfie camera, just like coming in as a whole, like as a big aspect of a patch, is just to me it's fucking laughable. It's like, oh, you just gave us a like a cell phone with a camera in game, so we can take pictures and post them on Twitter. Right, and like, most people have a Twitter account, and they have a cell phone, and they know how to take a screenshot because my seven-year-old niece knows how to do that. They're not doing it already, so what makes you think that you're going to make it a little bit easier to do? It would be a lot better if they released the selfie camera as an April Fool's thing. They just gave it a, as a free toy to everybody, and not make a whole patch for it. Yeah, I mean, that's just, as, as a feature in a patch... You're giving us screenshots that we could already take. I mean, who's who's stupid here? Who's 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 the, who's the absolutely stupid per person here? Is it Blizzard for just not understanding and not or not caring or not being attuned to what their players want, or is it the players for tolerating bubblegum as a meal?
Yeah, I, I felt kind of stupid, honestly. <laughs> I, I was know, like, oh, thanks, Blizzard. I got a selfie camera. I couldn't feel like more of a jackass. <laughs> you know, exactly. And, and the other other thing that I remember them talking about in the beta that they never really implemented was they were talking about accessories for your character. In yeah. other words, you were able to like have little things in your belt, like a bat, you know, for like you know patch, you know patches or different things that you could kind of wear on your belt, or you could have a backpack or a quiver, just different accessories that characters would have to give them a little bit of uniqueness and customization. And I remember that this was a feature that they were thinking of adding into the game somewhere down in the patches, and. The, you know, and they were talking like there'll probably be a quest line. I'm like, no fucking way. Blizzard's going to charge money for that <laughs> shit. There's no way it's going to be a quest line in Janine Jungle to open up a quiver for your, you know, hunter. No, that's not going to happen. It's going to be on sale at the Blizz store. But either way, that never made it in. Now we're heading to 6.2. It didn't show up in 6.1. It's not showing up in 6.2. I don't get it. And stuff just gets keep either just gets deleted or pushed back. I don't know what they're saving it for. I don't know. There's just such a lack of customization, such a lack of choice in the game that I think that certainly adds to the redundancy. The next thing, which I strongly know for a fact, because there is only one guy that actually likes Asher and <laughs> he's out there. He leaves comments. Poor Timmy. Channel. He's just yeah, running around Timmy. Ashwin. Yeah, hunting he, down rogues and warlocks, and on his warrior. Yes, exactly, and he's on his warrior with one of those super things that you know triple, you know, doubles his health and doubles his damage, and he has yeah. a pocket healer, and he thinks he's I got an artifact, guys. Look at me. Shut up, Timmy. <laughs> exactly. Hey, all right. You know, we all like the. Sorry idea. if anybody watching is named Timmy. We're not referring to you. We're making an imaginary Timmy. Yeah, no, the imaginary <laughs> Timmy is the wizard from Monty Python and the Holy Ground, actually. <laughs> You know, I just knew Asheran was going to be a disaster. I really did because I, th depending on – no matter how you look at it. It the was game bad on the beta, that's for sure. <laughs> it, well, I mean the beta was a different experience because everybody got to go there with full gear. And you could actually like load people in and like see everybody. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and also you had – also, you know, you went in there with full gear. It was yeah. something very new. It was something that people would migrate to because it was new and different, as opposed to once they tried it and, you know, it, it didn't have a way of facilitating itself as readily or easily in on live. No matter how you look at it, from what it was intended to be, what it is technically or strategically, it's a fucking failure. I mean, you could look at it from a technical standpoint, and Blizzard tried to do the world versus world thing and compete with Guild Wars 2 and other games that have that world versus world aspect. And it also it was seems to have been intended as a mechanism to kind of served as a melting pot for typical raiders to get into PvP. From a technological standpoint, it really turned out to be the worst of Wintergrass with the worst of Toll Barad, and it was marketed as old school AV. And when you talk old school AV and deliver the worst of Wintergrass and the worst of Toll Barad wrapped into one, you can't help but be disappointed. If they wanted to make it seem like an old school AV, here's a thought don't make Ashran and just either redo AV or make another AV like 2.0. Sure. AV works, no matter how you put it. Even now, a Ultra Valley works even at level 100. People load in, you can see everybody, and the matches start, the matches end. If you wanted to recreate old school AV, you should just made it. Battleground AV 2.0 with up to 50 to 60 players per like per team. Going up against each other, maybe twice as big, with siege engines, breakable buildings, breakable towers, breakable walls. Wow. Should have just done that. That would be really cool. I know, right? That would be incredible. But that I... will never happen. <laughs> you missed the boat, Blizzard. Damn, you know, that's a... That Titanic really has sailed. Is. That, that is an amazing idea, you know, with breakable towers or, or even a blowable bridge. You yeah. know, where you have to gather resources to rebuild the bridge, you know, to get mm -hmm. to the boss or something. Because, And also, I wouldn't even have a problem with <clears throat> wiping off the existing AV. Yeah. 
just simply because it greatly benefits the alliance for many strategical reasons. If you play Horde in alliance and you're a rogue and you want to, and you, like, let's say you play alliance and you want to cap a tower, all you got to do is stealth in, position yourself, pop a smoke bomb, boom, you cap it. It's not difficult, and you're not going to be hassled by any of the NPCs. If you're Horde, it's a different story. If you sneak in and you get to the node, right, even if you drop a smoke bomb, smoke bomb or uh, start to cap, they're all gonna, they all they got to do is turn around and fire because mm -hmm. you're in the line of sight of the NPCs defending that tower. That's a huge advantage for the Alliance. You add in that you have to cross a bridge in order to get to the Alliance boss, that's another huge advantage for the Alliance, because you could have hunters popping explosive traps, and everybody that has a knockback have all the fun in the world using those knockbacks and preventing that advance, no matter how many people there are. There are st a lot of strategical advantages for the Alliance in that battleground, and I play Alliance. I really do, and I not that I have a preference for it, that's just where I'm set up and how I'm, I guess, situated, but the fact is, I admit, yeah, they have an advantage, and I'd like it to be fair. I want things to be fair. I don't want to walk in there like, oh, wow, I hit a triple. Meanwhile, I was born on third base. <laughs> but I think that that would be a brilliant idea to, to revamp AV, add, you know, add dis some destructible things in there. Even make a fucking snowman. That would be cool. Yeah, just on the side, just a pile of snow. Players can come in together and just make a fucking snowman. Exactly. <laughs> and then you could get a fire mage to melt it, you know? And Yeah. I don't and know. Make two achievements. Make a snowman, burn a snowman. Done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I, you know, and just have it be an ongoing thing. You know, there might never be a winner or a loser. It's just a place where you could just, like, had a bad day at work, just go in there and, you know, screw people up, you know? Yeah. Intr introduce the word foobar to their, uh, you know, vo vocabulary. Mm -hmm. now and the finally adding something new to PvP. Pandari added two battlegrounds, but still, that's not enough. They actually added three <laughs> with the one in the, after in the patch. So I mean, oh yeah, yeah. they probably thought we were burnt out. That was too much. <laughs> yeah. So well, we won't give you anything. We'll give you Asheran, which I call Ashram. <laughs> A lot of my viewers call it Ashram. Oh, it's just. <laughs> Now, now no matter said, how you look at it, you're screwed. You said you liked it in the beta. What did you like about it? I liked the, the fact that it was small, that it wasn't populated, and the fact that you could actually see the players you're fighting instead of like now, where you could just stand in the middle of the road and out of nowhere, hey, look at that. Two feet away from you, you just see ten, like right now, five hordes loaded in. Oh, look at that, ten more hordes loaded in. Fifteen hordes loaded in. Twenty hordes, you in the middle of them. Oh, look at that, you're dead. What damage come from? Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> they just it, loaded it, in and killed you. Yeah, I'm gonna unsub this sucks. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, maybe the WoW token, I don't think it's gonna promote growth. It might stabilize that number, but, you know, the fact is, this is a publicly traded company, and if these guys don't only deliver growth, but consistent growth that exceeds expectations, heads are gonna roll. They will die.